As I said, Parliament's back for another week. And we're set for an interesting one ahead of the PM's departure for the United States later on in the week. Already we've seen a failed push by Labor and the crossbenchers to suspend standing orders in an order to call on Liberal Gladys Liu to make a statement to the Parliament about her connections to a number of Chinese associations. We've seen today also a renewed push for energy reform from the Coalition and the head of the Business Council of Australia, Jennifer Westacott, back in the Morrison government, who says industry should get back to the issues affecting shareholders and customers rather than their recent preoccupation with social issues. Joining me now to discuss all of this and more is Senior Liberal Advisor, former Senior Liberal Advisor and now Head of DPG Advisory Solutions, David Gazzard, and former Labor frontbencher and always power broker, Stephen Conroy. Great to have you on the show, both of you. Terrific to have you here now. Stephen Conroy, I've got to ask you about Gladys Liu. You're a Victorian, albeit it's a different party than your own. Do you think that it's right that Labor pursues her or is it racist? Well, look, I mean, clearly it's not racist. Uh, you've got Penny Wong, for a start, who's been raising questions. I mean, this is an absurd deflection by the Prime Minister because there are embarrassing uh, matters of fact that he uh, is trying to gloss over and when you can't let your MP out in public because uh, she is unable and incapable of answering questions truthfully, that's when you've got to start the big racist diversion. And I think there's been a lot of pushback in the media over the weekend from, from across-the-board commentators, but there are genuine questions to be asked and Labor is entitled to seek those answers. I mean, the very simplest thing she could do is stand up in Parliament and give an explanation. And... What we're seeing so far is obfuscation and, you know, a racist smear designed to try and put Labor on the defensive. That's a fair point, David. She's got parliamentary privilege for another couple of days before Parliament rises on Thursday. Why wouldn't she use it and clear all of this up? Well, I think she's a, you know, a backbencher. Clearly, she's it's welcome to first grade for Gladys Liu. Uh, and I think she's actually trying to sort out some of the community organisations to which she belongs. And consistent with uh, involvement at that level, she's going back through and belongs to dozens of them. Um, so I think she's just doing a, a, a completely the normal uh, activity of doing a, a stock take of the organisations to which she belongs in her community to find out, you know, whether she signed up, whether they signed her up, uh, all of the people involved. So I think she'd want to have the facts to hand before she would give a statement to Parliament. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you, you know, you only get one chance to make a statement to the Parliament. But Stephen Conroy, we know how serious this issue is. We saw confirmation from uh, the Signals Directorate, one of our intelligence agencies, that, is, that we were subject to a hack during your time, actually, in government around uh, 2011, I think it was, uh, by China. They wouldn't confirm it at the time. They are yeah. now confirming it. And uh, we're told also, just prior to the election, there was an attack from a sort of similar state actor. Well, we all know what that means. It was China <laughs> again. So, so, you know, these are legitimate questions. And you know, I'd say this, whether it was Liberal, whether it was Green, in this case, uh, or Labor politician who has questions to answer, they're the right questions to ask if they remain unanswered. Well, absolutely. I mean, what is indisputable is there are two facts. Asia has twice intervened to tell Prime Minister Turnbull do not go to functions that Gladys Liu has organised. Twice this has happened now, once in 2015 and once in 2018. There is a dispute about whether or not the Liberal Party were ever approached by any of the security agencies to suggest that it might be best if the Liberal Party picked a different candidate. There's a dispute around that. So Gladys Liu should be able to stand up and explain about those two events. Who, who had she invited? What was she doing that actually caused the Prime Minister of Australia to not attend two functions? These aren't racist questions. These are factual issues. And until she comes clean on what went on that required our national security agencies to warn off the Prime Minister, these questions will persist. All right, let's have a look at the issue of climate policy. The government's reintroducing its big stick legislation, which is needed, I have to say, to get some of these recalcitrant uh, energy companies 
not to shut down uh, facilities we need, like your lawn in Victoria, but of course, very importantly, Liddell here in New South Wales, which is on the chopping block in a couple of years' time. Uh, David Gazard, do we know where Labor is going here? Because you're getting some saying there needs to be a genuine rethink about its targets. Others are saying, no, we won't change the target, we'll just push out the date from 2030 to, say, 2035. It, it seems to me, it doesn't matter what they do nationally anyway, in opposition, if you've got uh, fellow travellers like Daniel Andrews in Victoria in government going ahead with pretty unachievable zero emissions targets for 2050, you know, is it all smoke and mirrors? Mm. Look, I mean, I'm not one to give advice to the Labor Party. They wouldn't listen to me anyway. Um, but I, I would point out that I think this is a fundamental schism in the party. Now, normally when you go through an election and you suffer a loss like they've done, the party would put those policies on hold and walk away from them, often for a generation or two. That's not happening here, and there's a risk in doing that, right? It exposes the fact that there's, there's not the authority to do it in the first place, and if Labor's not careful politically, it will find itself in a situation with whatever point it arrives to, um, no one will believe them anyway, because they can see what's going on here, and they're only doing it to be politically expedient. So I've said this on the show before, I think Labor, you know, knows it has to pitch right. It would know that cost of living is the number one issue when, when, when constituents are polled, yet it cannot bring itself to say, look, th this, is, this is madness what we're doing on, on, on our on climate policies. They, they just do not have the authority inside the party to do that. And they'll leave themselves open to accusations that they will go there anyway. Stephen Conroy, I just had a guest on the program including farmers out of North Queensland who are down knocking on doors in Canberra, trying to get Canberra to support them in a fight against the state government up there with land clearing laws and now these new reef protection laws. They're going to drastically change all industries, cane, uh, beef, banana industries, etc. Um, everyone feels under siege in Queensland other than the inner city green seats. And Labor wonders why it didn't make inroads in Queensland at the last election. If you'd won Queensland, well, it'd be a very different story. You would have been appointed to something very important under a shortened <laughs> government. So, so very, who, very kind of you to say. But look, well, I'm I mean, telling the truth. That but, begins. No, no, you are. That that would that would begin who, to explain why we only got 26 percent of the primary vote. This, this is the in point. Right? So, who inside the Labor Party is going to be mugged by the reality that you've actually got to represent workers right back to the Bar Calden tree like you used to? Rather than, rather than the elites and the trendies? Well, look, I think probably the toughest day for Labor in the campaign was the day they tried to explain that there was no cost to the climate change policy. I think that was, mm. that was one which made me squirm in my seat. Uh, to his credit, Mark Butler has indicated uh, that it's under review. I think you take that code for knowing it's got to change. Now, whether that is just trying to push back the years by, uh, you know, five years or so, I don't think that will solve the fundamental problem. Uh, that Labor's climate policy had, which it became the overarching narrative. We allowed our climate change position to become the dominant debate uh, around jobs and security and economic growth in, uh, in Queensland particularly, but also in Western Australia. If, if we allow that to happen again, we will get slaughtered at the next election. You cannot win an election off a 26% primary vote in Queensland. This is unachievable, and Sydney and Melbourne... Uh, the inner, inner ring of people in Sydney of Melbourne in the Labor Party and in its support base have to understand that you can't govern with inner-city trendy policies and will hope to win the federal election. David Gazzard, do you think business, too... Uh, I listened very carefully to comments from Jennifer Westacott, the head of the BCA today, Business Council of Australia. Uh, I think taking on board what uh, Ben Morton was saying on Friday, business mm. have got to get back to business, get out of the way of government's implementing political issues or dealing with political issues so that ordinary people can just get on with their lives rather than this politicking and the lecturing that's going on from business about social issues and identity politics and all the other stuff that hasn't been part of their core business for some time, but they've made it a real issue for, for boards and CEOs. I, look, I think Jennifer's comments are timely and it shows that she's listening. Um, just taking up on a point that Stephen just made about and, and you were just making earlier about um, where, where the Labor Party, Party is now with workers. What, what we've almost seen over the last two weeks or so, and it was highlighted with the speech that Ben Morton gave last week, 
is that the Liberal Party is pitching to become the party of the worker. Um, so if you went into Joel Fitzgibbon's seat in the Hunter or if you went into a Queensland seat, you're a lot more likely to hear Scott Morrison, should he visit, to say, I'm going to support you in your aspirations. I'll look after your mining job. I, I will protect the jobs of your kids, should they choose to go into mining. And I'll look after your parents in retirement. Um, and forget about big business. We are only interested in big business if they are employing and helping the economy grow. And obviously, we want to help support that. But we are fundamentally for the workers. And that's a space that's been left for Scott Morrison to fill uh, in the absence of, of Labor, yeah. supporting those traditional blue-collar jobs. That's the fight I think of the, it's been that, a really interesting development. That is the fight of the term. Who's got the worker? Stephen Conroy, David Gazard, thanks very much for your time tonight. Pleasure.